Welcome to PC Games Nostalgia, where we talk about yesterday's PC games today. My name is Jimmy Wilhelmsson, and I will be your host for the next 20 minutes or so. The game we're going to probe into today is... Each time we bring a guest from the gaming industry to our digital studio. And today's honored guest star is Mr. Henrik Johansson. Welcome, Henrik. May I call you Henrik, by the way? You may, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you used to be part of a duo called Mediocre Games. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, the last couple of years were great people. Yeah. Three people, right. Please tell us about Mediocre Games. Oh, it was a very great time we made. Uh, let's see, we were working for about eight years and we've made about one game a year during that time. And uh, that was fun. We were, we felt like we were a very efficient team and we just did whatever we wanted to do. And uh, it was fun and fast. And kind of riding the wave of the mobile games industry as yes, that was developing. So Dennis and Emil are working on a voxel destruction game for PC now, I think. Right. And uh, I started a new company called Longhand Electric, and I'm making an experimental dream exploration game. It's quite psychedelic Okay. for uh, PC also. I just released a video this Monday for the Day of the Devs event. You guys should check out. Okay. So when is that going to be finished? What, what's the name of it? It's called Overlook Trail. Okay. And it'll be out, I think, in about a year and a half. So still a lot of work to do. But this, for me, this is a huge project. All the mediocre games were, I think, about a year on average in development. But this is, I mean, this for me, it's almost a four-year project. Four year? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, we were working quite quickly and I, I i feel like i'm done with stress and I, I can afford to take it a little bit slower now and i want to enjoy making this game and this game is also a game kind of about making games and about <laughs> dreams but also about aspirations so i put some of my childhood um, game ideas into this game wow and also there are some um, Tributes in this game to games that I like, especially in this game that we're going to talk about soon. That sounds like a perfect match for us retro fans, really. I haven't, uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't heard about it before. What is the game about? Is that a secret, or could you tell us something? Give us something. No, there are no secrets, but in a way, it's kind of like Seinfeld. It's not a game about anything. <laughs> specifically. It's more about the game. It's a it's a game about making games. It's a game about dreaming. It's a game about subconscious uh, ideas, and um, it's a in, in largely it's improvised. I would have been trying to uh, recreate what it feels like to dream, rather than to uh, create a specific dream. And I also like this game we're about to talk about. I think that's the perfect game for this. Also, it's just so full of little pop culture, uh, trivia, and uh, little nods to other franchises, and even uh, the, the creators of the game itself uh, is in there. So it's perfect uh, comparison to what I'm so doing So let's, let's do that. Let's talk about our retro game that we're nostalgic about today, Space Quest 3 by Sierra Online. What is it? I mean, Space Quest 3, yes, I have played it. I've played, well, the first and the second and the third one, at least, on my Amiga 500. You had an Amiga 600, that's a bit cooler. But uh, I, I may be a bit older than you, so I had the, the previous one. What, what is so special about Space Quest 3 in particular, according to you? There's so many things. Uh, but I guess if, if, if you have to be a person who enjoys... Um, 
adventure games first. I mean, for me, this is the ultimate adventure game in many ways. Yeah. Because um, even the story, the main character is such an anti-hero, this space janitor, loser guy. Roger Wilco. Yeah, and it's so easy, I think, as a kid to identify with <laughs> like that. At least I did. And I thought he was so, just everything against him, but still kind of charming and kind of like not always the nicest guy, but um, I don't know, it's just a fun player to explore the universe with. And there's such a rich universe with so many details and nods to different franchises. Like there's a bit of Star Wars and uh, Star Trek and uh, even Space Odyssey in there. and and. It's just so many details, and it's so much more than an adventure game. What is the story, really? I mean, I don't <laughs> or know. Or is there I no even... story? <laughs> there is a there is a story, but I feel like it's just the story. It's really him just getting in trouble all the time and trying to save his own skin. Yeah, and maybe the universe a little bit, but because I think it's just. Space Quest Three. I mean, the the first episode, the first uh, game in the series was much older looking it's it's really retro it has these block uh, pixels really big pixel it was it was yeah. uh, it was running uh, on even on slow machines there he fought an enemy called vohal yeah i remember right that. yeah and in the second episode vohal is back i think it's even called vohal's yeah, revenge yeah. but towards the end of the second uh, uh, game you kill vohal spoiler well <laughs> sorry I don't think... Do we have a definition of... Do we have a rule against spoilers here in the show? I don't think so, because, I mean, come on. It's been... It's, we're being nostalgic, so, so we, we can have spoilers. But, I but, think also, like, th these games, like, this Space Quest series, like, the, the overall story, it's not, like, the, the, the main thing about the game. No. I mean, it's like, Bohal is in the first two games, but, I mean, I don't spend so much time thinking about Bohal. It's more about surviving every scene. Right like little comedy and everything like and all the little franchise nods like even the planet of the apes guys and all, all of that stuff happening and uh more uh, i think i enjoy like the conversations with the different characters yeah and, uh, and it's about progress really like you're saying getting forward and even enjoying a failure because there are tons of ways to die and they're all hilarious yeah yeah exactly you kind of want to see all the different <laughs> ways you it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> so the start of the story that maybe isn't a story. Uh, at the start, Roger Wilco is frozen somehow in some kind of uh, he's in hibernation in some kind of pod, escape pod. Yeah, exactly. And Which he gets picked up, uh, picked up by this garbage freighter. Exactly. He's po he's picked up with in, in a garbage freighter. And I was I, I know you're the guest and you're allowed to talk, but I have to say something. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off this spring. Do you watch Final Space on Netflix? No, I haven't seen it. It's an animated TV show. I'm not going to spoil anything. But in the beginning of the second season, the hero there, who is kind of an anti-hero like Roger Wilco, you're watching the, the beginning of, of, of the second season, and it's the exact same ending. He is sleeping in an escape pod brought up by an automated uh, garbage freighter. And what does he say when he wakes up? And, and, and uh, w w the first second he wakes up when the pod opens, what does he say? I don't remember. Where am I? Where, okay. <laughs> That was the coolest thing in Space Quest 3, on an Amiga at least, because it was uh, digitized audio. You see, you saw a speech bubble that said, where am I? And the, the, he actually said it. There was a, I mean, this sounds like we're 200 years old, but this was before games really had audio. So he's speaking. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time he's speaking in the whole game. Where am I? And the, the Final Space series just stole that. It was so funny. Sorry. Uh I need to check that out. You need to. That's, that's great. I hope the, the makers of that show were fans. Also, they must be. <laughs> I, I don't know, but but that it's it's so oh, it's so much fun because you said there's a lot of references to Star Trek, Star Wars, and Planet of the Apes, and it's it's funny that they have a reference to Space Quest Three in an animated series about space. I mean, it all goes around in this big yeah, meta wheel. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I like that a lot.
So whatever you uh, you uh, you 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 bring yourself out of that uh, garbage freighter. You you find some old uh, ship, whatever, and you repair it. And you need some hyper motivators and stuff. It's so random. It's such a, and I like that because that's kind of like even with Bohol, I just feel like Roger Wilco just got thrown in that situation, but he doesn't really care about the bigger picture that much. He just wants to survive. Mm. Kind of. And now it just starts over, and it's just everything's completely different, and there's no connection to that whole, whole story anymore. Right. It's a random place. Have you revisited Star Space Quest uh, Three lately? Oh, it's been years, and uh, but I was checking some um, some uh, yeah, people playing it on YouTube before this this conversation, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's just interesting going back and seeing all the frustration, you know, playing a game like that, and seeing someone else going through that. <laughs> and, you know, I think I was 11 or 12 playing this maybe. So I was hitting with a dictionary uh, in my lap because I didn't know English well enough. Yeah. So I had to look for new words maybe if I was missing something. <laughs> right. But it didn't make it easier. No. And it but, still uh, isn't. It still isn't. No, it's, it's still hard. I, it's still hard because I checked out. Well, we're not native English speaker, obviously, and some of you guys are who's, who are listening. But we didn't know the, the 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 ship that you find in the freighter is called the aluminum mallard. Really, I didn't get that joke because mallard is a duck. It's a duck-like bird. It's 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 the uh, it's what in Swedish called gräsand. The, 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 where the uh, the the male has a green head. So that's new to me. That's good. I'm... It's completely new to me. So you can still, at least if you're not, if English is not your native tongue, you can still find after like 35 years, or at least no, 40 years, you can find a uh, 30. Sorry, you can find uh, some uh, Easter eggs and hidden things that makes you laugh. Yeah, it's so full of that. This <laughs> game, and it's quite uh, incredible what they did in that sense, because it's so early in 1989. I, I I can't remember any other game from that time period that uh, did that, and especially like uh, growing up with these kinds of adventure games. Talking to my friends who were playing on Nintendo or something, and I felt like we were exploring completely different worlds. Yeah. And, and and I felt like this um, this is something with this kind of adventure game also because it's so slow and you have to uh, almost look for new verbs and, and things all the time and think about what it is. I spent so much time using my imagination and kind of dreaming about what's around the next corner rather than you know when you play a, some action platform yeah. game maybe and it's all, all about jumping. And this is. Would you uh, even say that Space Quest Three or even some other of Sierra Online's uh, older games were they really for adults? I think so. Yeah, I mean, especially the, like Leisure Suit Larry. Even Space Quest. I think so. Or I mean, at least, uh, I think pe at least people in their twenties. Uh, it's just so many references and things. That um, I think uh, teenagers might not even know about. Yeah. But uh, but also maybe just get a feeling like the, the guys who made this game kind of did for their own enjoyment too. It's like these are people who really like these kitschy sci-fi stuff and they really get into it and kind of want to make a tribute to it and explore that world. They kind of make fun of it and make fun of themselves a little bit too and it just really works it's just uh we can't make something like this and not care about this no no i agree with you so the two guys who did space quest series uh, mark crow and scott murphy they're actually in the game they call themselves two guys from andromeda yeah. and they're in the yeah. game those are the ones you're supposed to uh, rescue from that evil fat kid a programmer kid right. right yeah and that brings me to what you said earlier i mean they are in their own game. You're making a game now where you kind of you are in your own game, or at least your your childhood dreams and and whatever. Has has Space Quest Three maybe inspired you in some way? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I for sure it has. Um, at least for details like that, 
Like, I, I'm not in my game in that sense. No. It's more like, you know, my the idea of wanting to make a video game is in the game. And uh, I can't, you know, the only way I could make that is using my own childhood ideas. Mm. I can't, I can't, I can't, because if I try to, you know, come up, I like, I wonder what kind of, an idea of a game a 13 year old kid would dream of and it would just be like uh you know an adult guess or something yeah but i still remember what i was trying to do naively and i just wanted to as a service to myself but also kind of just like as a meta game design uh, idea explore that what, what it would be like to let that little kid be a uh, game designer running a game design company now. But that's just a small fragment of uh, Overlook Trail because the game is much, much bigger than that. And it's uh, not really, it's in no way about me as a person. It's just about, it's like a montage of ideas. And I think in a way, Space Quest 3 is the first experience I had in games that even comes close to that idea. Right. You can make so much, you can mix reality and fiction and you can mix your IP with other IPs but you only do it very subtly so it doesn't really infringe on anything right it's more like little tributes and uh, I just felt like that was very tastefully done and, and um, extremely charming so then for sure there might be a basic quest 3 tribute in my game I, I would be so happy if they were. But, uh, but the two guys yeah, from a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the two guys from Andromeda did not really. I mean, they put themselves in the, themselves in the game, but they're not. They don't look like themselves, of course, and they didn't. They didn't really put themselves as p people. They put themselves as game programmers, I would say, because the reason you find out that they are uh, held captive by the evil fat kid is through an arcade game. On, uh, on, on on in a hamburger joint uh, called Astro Chicken. Yeah, Do you remember that? Oh wait, uh, yeah. the, 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 it was just the arcade game that was called Astro Chicken. Right. The, 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 no, game. The, 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 the burger. The burger joint is called Monolith Burger. Yes, yes, yes. Now the game is called Astro Chicken, and once you beat the high score. You can see, uh, I don't know, something about high score, and you can see their message that they're being held captive and, and blah, blah, blah. So you have to, you have to be really... That's how you found out. Yeah, that. and that's, that's kind of a stupid way. But it's also a great way, because you have to play this stupid game. Fantastic way, because it's, uh, it's a commentary about games, and it's perfect. It's but the perfect. game was hard. I hated Astro Chicken. I thought it was really hard. It was like Lunar Lander. I kind of like this. <laughs> One thing I remember is that both the first and the second game had failures that did not show up until much later. I think it's in Space Quest 2, maybe it might be the first one, but I think it's 2, where you are meeting what is obviously an alien, you know, from the movies, the, the alien. Uh, yeah, and oh, and yeah, it yeah. kisses you, hugs you and just gives you a big kiss. And then nothing happens. It, it just moves away and you're like, oh, they were only joking. And you play the game and much later, you just fall to the ground and there's an alien popping out of your body. So you, have, so you die and you have to re... You don't have a save game from that, that far back. So they basically destroyed the whole game for you. You just died hours later from that shit. It's a great way to prolong gameplay oh. and a few hours, but it's very cruel. It's very cruel. But they, did they do that on many occasions? Do you think? No, I, and I they don't... didn't do that in Space Quest Three. That's what I'm. Uh, that what is I was going to say. Oh, I think yeah, they they, they stop doing that stuff when you when you fail, you kind of fail directly. I mean, yeah. that Annihilator thing, the, the Terminator copy that is after you. I mean, whenever when you meet him, he kills you instantly if you can't escape. We've talked about the, the fat kid with the, uh, the robot uh, fight. We talked about the Annihilator. Are there any special moments from Space Quest 3 that you personally remember being? I think my favorite moment or my favorite play is, is the gift shop in, um, <laughs> on that same planet. And that character. And, and for sure, 
there will be something similar in my game. <laughs> because I love that, that character so much. He's yellow, no? No, he's like a turquoise and he's got this kind of tank top and he's like shaped like a cone almost. He's got these big eyes and he's got a, a kind of like a afternoon shadow a bit and he's just telling you this and he's got these like you can buy a postcard from Dune. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean Arrakis. I mean Arrakis. Yeah. And all these little trinkets. It's really trying to sell you like this is animal on a stick that's screaming. Right, you know? right. So all these useless things. <laughs> and uh, that was that's a that place has been a huge inspiration for me, strangely. <laughs> but it's just uh, because it's something I've never seen anything like that in a video game before. Because it's so mundane and super strange at the same time and that combination really works for me personally it's just uh, uh, weird and exciting and also super boring and uh, nonsensical but I, I reckon you like that because you talked about Seinfeld earlier. I mean, the things about yeah. uh, doing stories about nothing. And that is really so. I mean, it's a guy standing in a shop. It could be the easiest thing. He's just standing there and you're just buying things. But it's an atmosphere. He's a character. It, it, it feels like something. It feels fun. It feels weird. It feels, it feels uh, there is something you, you, you had yeah. some experience from that, that mundane thing. I think that's, that's one of the reasons we like that game. Yeah, and it's something about that planet. Like, there's it's this huge wasteland, and there's a tourist trap in the middle of it. <laughs> and there's this guy, and I think now when I'm, when I'm old, being older, having been to the U.S. a bit, and they have all these desert uh, villages and small towns, and they have kind of places like that. Even in Sweden, I've seen places like that. Yeah. Now, and that's just, uh, some crazy guy that, or, or, or a woman decided to just start a weird, like where I grew up, there's a guy who, um, and I come from the countryside in Småland, and there's a guy who's decided to make a huge dinosaur barn <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. All I've around. been there. It's outside of Kalmar. Yeah. It's west of Kalmar. I've been there. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. though. It's super cool. Yeah. It's got animatronics, even. Yeah. I mean, it's not in exactly in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I mean but it, it, that's not the middle of nowhere. But it's well, it's pretty damn close. They have the, they, you have farmland <laughs> next to it. I mean, it's it's cropland yeah, next to it. Yeah, next to a field and a highway, <laughs> and then there's just dinosaurs. And that's uh, for me, that's basically. It's not just a barn. Just just to make sure for you viewers who haven't been there, it's it's it's, it's a yeah. barn, but it's a huge barn. It and yeah. and he also has a. There's also outside. There's a small. Even, uh, I would call it a park really? almost. Yeah, we're talking life size. Uh, exactly. Dinosaur, yeah. Like yeah. And, uh, so, I mean, calling it a barn, I think that's uh, making it, uh, it's, it sounds less barn, than like it is in, because it's pretty big. A barn the size of an aircraft tank. Right, but, right. Uh, you should go there. If you're, ever, if you're ever to Kalmar in, in Sweden, you should, uh, you should seek out the dinosaur park <laughs> in a barn. <laughs> I think there's something about places like that, that uh, this game is also capturing that the feeling of that place yeah. somehow. That uh, I've never seen that in a game. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe in uh, Monkey Island or a game or Grim Fandango. Those, those games do that little bit, yeah. but uh, it's rare and it's uh, quite a trick when they make it work because you can get the feeling of this. Even in pixel art, like this is a real place almost. I can feel this weird planet, and this crazy statue, and it's just eccentric and strange. Henrik, it's been an honor having you here. We can talk about Space Quest 3 forever, I think, but we have to stop somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been an honor to be part of it. It's been a great conversation. <laughs> I wish you good luck with your game that has that uh, has been uh, will be out in uh, a year and a half, and I hope you get uh, some good Space Quest 3 references in it because we will definitely yes, check yeah. it out. All right. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Take care. All right, take care. <laughs>